steps on my own. I don't want to take any of the credit. I don't want to take any of the glory. The more I rebuke the spirit of pride. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bind it and I loose a spirit of humility. Lord, oh God, that there Weaken me, O oh Father, so I may be able, O oh Lord, to be strong by you. He cut a most la baria talaba. He cut a God. I glory in the infirmities. I glory in the weakness of the oh Lord my flesh. Because in the weakness of myself, that's where I can seek divine help from the Father. He cut a baria la santo la baria talaba haya. Father, we need divine help. We need divine restoration. We can't possibly try to act in the mode of the flesh. We can't possibly try to operate based on our own intellect, God. Or oh, demanda. Apostle Paul said that he did not come with words of man's wisdom and enticing words, but he came with power of the Holy Ghost and in demonstration of the Holy Ghost. He called the mandala bohoya. He alamaria. Your fame can do you something Something, but it cannot do the thing that only the Holy Ghost can do. Your fame, your fortune, your popularity will never be able to get you to operate in the spirit. Only a humble heart and a meek spirit can get you to transcend to places you never thought you could go to. God's looking for a humble spirit. God's looking for a pure heart who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord, who that has clean hands and a pure heart, he cut a moho son do la bordi and la bahia, he cut a mordi and la bordi and la bahia, he cut a mordi and la bo. You want to know who God is looking for? He's looking for someone with clean hands, he's looking for someone with a pure heart. He a la boho shot a la bordi and la boho ya la bordi and la bahia. He a la bordi and la bordi at a la bordi a calabosa. Oh, the a calabohordo cost of Talaba. Oh, Rabo Shala la laia. Oh, the and a la bordi at Talabahaya. Oh, the and a la bordi and a la bordi a calabo. Oh, the a set a la bordi a calaha. Ha, he are the cala. Hala bordi and Tamaso to the Mardica. Robo Santalaba. Lord, all of the glory goes to you. You will not share your glory. With another, he cut out a la bordianda de la bosha taye, Raba Kando la bordioco sato la bahaya. Father, do whatever you have to do so that I may die, so that you could live through me. So I am not the one shining, but you're the one that's shining through me because the oh Lord, everything in my life has been surrendered to you dead oh lord ya katana mahaya rebo son the lord and the boria karabo son the dead in christ jesus sakatala bahaya hi ala boria and ala bosoto hor de me canto de que socotona mahan hi ala bardi karasoto Rda kosonda la bordi, rda kosonda, rda kosonda le 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 ba, rda ka i karda masira, rda kosonda la ba, rda kosonda la bordi kata ye, hi ala ba shata la ba ya, hi ala ba rda kosonda la ba, hi ala la la bordi asonda la ba, hi ala ba rda kata la ba ya, la bordi anda la bordi anda la ba ho sonda la la bordi a kata la ba ya. He a la bordi and la la bordi and la la bordi and la la boh. Or the kala la bordi and kala la boh. She a la la bordi and la la boh. She a la la bordi and la la boh. He a la la boh. Shut up. Psalm twenty four four reads: He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. Who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from God of his salvation. God is looking for humility. He called that but because humility attracts the supernatural. When you have a humble and a meek spirit, he called that it does something to God where he will begin to showcase his power through you because he will not share his glory with another. So in order 
order for him to be glorified in the earth, he needs a vessel. And he needs a vessel that's not going to take the glory. So that's why when he sees a meek heart, he sees a humble and pure person, he wants to use them. Because he knows when he begins to show forth his glory and his power, they're not going to take it for themselves, but they're going to give it to God. Oh God. Lord, equip the spirit of humility upon us. Equip the spirit of humility upon us, oh God, that when you start to move, we don't add to nor take away anything. But Lord, that the word is released in its purest form. The word of God is released in its purest form. God's looking for a humble heart. He called the Lord cleanse us of all filth, all unrighteousness, oh God. He called up, he called up, oh Soto, he called a ason dolor de ete, and a la bordi a Soto, re e cara mahaya, re bo son de la bordi a caye, hanto romon de los Soto la mahaya, catalabaha. He called a masi, God, you're looking for that humble heart. You're looking for that humble spirit. Somebody is praying the Holy Ghost right now. And feel after what God is speaking. Feel after what God is saying. Feel after what he's telling you. What are the thoughts that he's impressing upon your mind? What are the phrases he's giving you? He kinda, it doesn't have to be super long. It doesn't have to be super complicated. It doesn't have to be super intricate. All it has to be is a divine word from the Lord. Even if it's just one phrase, it could be from God. Because one word can infect all. Uh, it can affect a whole entire nation. One phrase can just affect a whole entire people. One phrase, that's all it takes for God. He what is he saying? What is he speaking? He began to listen to his voice. He and he's no respecter of persons. If he speaks to you, he can speak. To, if he speaks to me, he can speak to you. He cut He's no respecter of persons. It's not about gender. It's not about age. It doesn't matter how long you've been in the church. God talked to Samuel when he was just a boy. He It's not about the age. It's not about how long you've been in this. It's about how hungry you are for it. God, I tune in to what you're saying, O oh Lord. I tune in what the voice of God is speaking to the people of God. When you hear God begin to speak to you, just begin to voice it out in English. It may be one phrase and you may say, well, that doesn't make any sense. Well, it's better just to speak it out in faith and to see and to try. Maybe it could be from God, but you don't know if it is unless you try it out, unless you act in faith. Whatever he's speaking to you, just begin to speak it out and voice it out in faith. It doesn't matter what it is. If it's the word of God, it's his word. He tala bordianda la la bordianda la bahaya. He ala bordianda la la bordianda la la bosata. He ala la bordianda la la bordia kalabahoya. Hala bordianda la la bosata la bahaya. Doesn't matter what he's speaking, doesn't matter what he's saying. If it's a divine word from God, it's a divine word from God. It doesn't matter how long, how short it is. Just begin to listen to his voice. He's always speaking. He wants to speak to his church. He wants to speak to his sons and to his daughters. Just tune in to what he's speaking. Father, just, just begin to lift up your hands all over this place. 
Just begin to lift up your hands and say, Father, I'm listening. Father, I'm listening. He sondo. You can speak whatever you want to speak, but God, I just want to let you know, Father, I'm listening. He You don't have to force me. You don't have to, Lord, prime me up in order for me, oh Lord, to hear. God, I'm listening. You can speak whatever rhema you want, and I'm gonna release it in faith. He mondo la bordia calabaja. Handa la bordia, anda la bordia. Um, cator do bo sata la bordia, catalaba. I can hear the Lord saying very clearly, dry bones. He carabo. I can hear him speaking in the Holy Ghost saying, dry bones. And when dry bones in the word of God, they may be dry bones, but it doesn't matter how dry it is, how not alive it may seem it doesn't matter what it may be God can resurrect it back to life it doesn't matter what in your life has been stolen from it doesn't matter what in your life has taken place if God can raise some dry bones back to life he can surely do it for you and if you believe that word that it doesn't matter what has taken in your place in your life it doesn't matter what has happened it doesn't matter what dry bones are in your life but if you believe that God can raise whatever it is back up I want you to just begin to worship God with everything you have with all of your heart with all of your soul with all of your mind with all of your strength if you believe that he can raise dry bones up again and he can attach flesh to those dry bones it doesn't matter how dead it may seem it doesn't matter how dead it may seem God can resurrect it back to life. He can, can do it for dry bones. He can do it in your life. I want you to lift up your hands towards heaven right now by the authority of the word of God and the power that is in the name of Jesus. I loose dry bones to come back to life. I loose dead financial blessings to come and spring forth. I lose dead promises, oh Lord, for them to rise up again in the name of Jesus. And now, would you shout unto God with the voice of triumph? Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for loving us so, God. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. He's in love with you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord. Jesus, lover of my soul. Jesus, I will never let you go. Would you lift up your hands to Jesus? Would you thank him for where you have you have been brought from? Hallelujah. Now I know Jesus. Jesus, lover of my soul. Jesus, I will never let you go. You take me. Set my feet upon the rock, and now somebody cry out to Jesus. He can't love a bottle and a love a cassandra. Oh, wow. 
Him tonight more than just singing a song, more than just lyrics that your soul begin to be thankful and worship Him. Somebody talk to him right now. Would you just spend a little time in prayer? Would you talk to him? The reason why we sing so we could have the presence of God. And when the presence of God shows up, we begin to have fellowship with him. We begin to talk to him. For his house is a house of prayer. Somebody believe that he loves you. you Let him drive away the shame out of your mind. Let him cover you in the name of Jesus. Even in the midst of uncertainties. I love you. Somebody love him. Oh, yeah, da 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 
Somebody begin to talk in tongues. Can you feel the presence of the Lord in this place? There's an anointing here that you can have. There's a flow of the Spirit here that you can tap into. And it could give you joy. It could give you peace. It could give you what you need in this life. Not just to sustain you, but bring you to into everlasting life with Him. I will never oh, Jesus. Jesus, lover of my soul. Jesus, I will never let you go. Somebody make a commitment right now to him. Make a commitment to the Lord. Somebody seek him. The more I seek you, the more I find you. The more I find you, the more. Yeah, that's 
Satale. Let him direct you. Let him cover you. In the name of Jesus. His love is so sweet. He can do anything. Somebody seek him more and more. Somebody enter into his presence deeper than you've ever been before. presence his spirit the more you want the more it's inexhaustible God wants to minister right now. He wants to flow. If you need more of him, if you can't get enough of him, why don't you come to the front right now? I know it's unorthodox on a Wednesday night, but we'll flow with the Spirit of God. If you want more of him, if you've been thirsty, if you've been hungry and you need more of him, why don't you come right now and drink from the cup of refreshing in the hands of the Lord, from the presence of the Lord. And as you come, would you lift up your hands? As you come, would you lift up your hands? And would you begin to ask God? And would you begin to just flow in the presence of the Lord? In the name of Jesus, he can quench your thirst. Oh, he is living water. He is the water of life. Oh, if any man thirst, oh, at the great day of the feast, when everyone has been full of eating and drinking, purposely Jesus came at the last day of that great feast, and he makes an invitation for those who are hungry and who are thirsty for eternal things. If any man thirsts, let him come unto me. 
He that believeth upon me, Jesus said, as the scripture saith, oh, out of your innermost being, out of your soul, out of your mind, out of your spirit that's been affected by this fallen world, oh, rivers, rivers of living water will flow so you could be restored and you could be made whole and not only survive, but thrive and be more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Join with somebody in prayer if you feel led in the Holy Ghost. Join with somebody in prayer and worship if you feel led with the Holy Ghost. Where two or three agree as touching anything that they shall ask. Jesus said, my Father will grant it unto them. Join together right now with your faith and begin to pray for one another. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. That's right, go ahead, keep praying. There's a flow of the Holy Ghost. There's a flow of the Holy Ghost. His love is so deep. I want to see that your feet drink from the cup in your hand. Lay back against you and breathe. Feel your heart beat. This love is so deep. It's more than I can stand. I melt in your peace. It's overwhelming. I want to sit at your feet, drink from the cup in your hand, lay back against you and breathe, feel your heart beat. This love is so deep, it's more than I can stand. I melt in your peace, it's overwhelming. I want to see that your feet drink from the cup in your hand. Lay back against you and breathe. Feel your heart beat. This love is so deep. It's more than I can stand. I melt in your peace. It's overwhelming. The more I seek you, the more I find you, the more I find you, the more I love you, the more I seek The more I find you, the more I love you. I want to sit at your feet, drink from the cup in your head, lay back against you and breathe, feel your heart beat. This love is so deep. 
also wants to do a ministry of the word here. Lord, I believe you've prepared hearts tonight, amen. Because I believe the Lord has a message to some of you that need it very badly. As I was seeking his will for tonight, he wouldn't allow me to leave the subject on the tactics of the enemy. He said, somebody needs to know. Somebody needs to know more about the power of my word, amen, to reveal the lies of the enemy. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you for your faithfulness in the house of God. And you can see the quick announcements I want to give Friday we are going to have our college and career meet at our house and we'll see the college and career group on Friday in Jesus name thank you Jesus all right and pastor showing you the other announcements Thank you for your faithfulness in bringing your binders. But you probably won't need it as a reference, but you can use it to take notes if you want. And you can always take a picture of the slides as well. Especially if it does something in your soul. Amen? Um, because as I was studying, God was doing something in my soul. God was doing a work. A deep work and sometimes God needs to do that but we've got to allow him amen 
We've got to allow him to do that. In Jesus' name. And so I will call this tonight as the tactics of the enemy part two. We're going to continue with the flow, although the things that I'm going to talk about tonight will intersect with other parts um, that we've, of, of God's word that we've learned earlier as well. Amen? Because the word of God is one, right? It's all together as one in Jesus' name. And as your binders are closed, who can tell me, I'm just going to, you know what I usually do, I want to do a quick review. Who can tell me one of the three primary attacks of the enemy or, or one of the main ways that the enemy tries to attack the church? Who can give me one? Amen. We know that through words, right? Okay. Now, I'm going to ask what form, okay? And as a guide, let me show you this slide, amen? Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give unto you the power, that's us, the church, to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And that will kind of give you the clue, the highlight. So who can, if you remember, what do we call them? Yes, stinging accusations, correct. That is as of the scorpion, right? Okay. Stinging accusations, okay. What's another one? Subtle lies of the enemy, right? Like a serpent, right? Like a serpent. Subtle lies of the enemy. And... What is another form which is very common and especially right now with the COVID-19 situation? What he tries to put fear, right? Amen. The fear, okay? That's what the enemy has been using. So I'm just going to go through the slides really quickly. Um, so the serpents are the subtle eyes such as the spirit of offense. We're learning that, amen. Are we learning? how to discern his voice, right? Because he wants to cause division in your family and your relationships. So we got to know, right? That's usually his first trap, offenses, okay? And then spirit of iniquity. Let's try to sound like our, our way of thinking. And we will want to do it, okay? We're tempted because he knows how to make our flesh feel good, right? It, it will appeal to our flesh and to our will, what we like, what we want, okay, which is not necessarily good, right, and not necessarily the will of God because we always want to know, Lord, what is your will, right? And then religious tradition, okay, these are the subtle lies of the enemy. Number two are the scorpions or the stinging accusations, especially the spirit of of condemnation. And tonight, I feel led to go in deeper into that to teach us more of the spirit of condemnation so that we could be free, amen, completely free from that. And then number three, other powers or fear. And how many of you have been started, started working on that Fear of death, right? To be an overcomer of the fear of death, which we could say is the highest form of fear, but we need to be free from it. It's not a normal, normal thing that it's like it's okay to have fear. No, because as we studied last Wednesday, fear creates what? Bondage. Bondage. All right? So we need to set, be set free from the fear of death and all other kinds of fear, amen? Because God did not give us a spirit of fear, amen? But a power and love and of a sound mind. All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So we are going to continue on this topic of the tactics of the enemy. Because I don't really think we can overteach 
on this subject. Why? Because the adversary is always actively working against us so that we can't, so we can't afford to be ignorant of his tactics. So in the name of Jesus, What is, I'm going to ask you a question again, what is the first part of our defensive armor that we need to wear or put on every day? Yes, thank you. The belt or the girdle of truth. All right, told you I'm going to cover stuff we, we already know. Church, we need to be intentional in our walk with God, and this belt of truth is our guide that will always keep us, what, heading in the right direction. And have you realized yet that every day we make decisions, right? Whether they are big or small, decisions about what to do, right, or where to go, right? And as the psalm records, the word is also like a light unto our path. And what does the light do, right? Shines, make things bright. Amen. When we turn on the light, Right? We see the light. Amen? Because the light removes darkness as it makes our pathway bright and clear. And the lies of the enemy are his works of darkness. And every time we go to the word, his word is the light that reveals all these dark lies to us. And it basically erases it, amen? For you can't see the darkness anymore when the light is on. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth. That is my light. So we need to consciously keep that belt on, amen, securely upon us so that we may always know where to go or what to do. Because his word will always keep us safe in the right direction. For we don't and should not make decisions based on worldly influences or on economics or on what is convenient or whatever sounds good to us, right? Because whatever sounds good to us is usually the subtle voice of the adversary, remember? So we always need to back up our decisions, big or small, with the word of God, the logos, the written word of God. And John 8, 32, we know this. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Wee's translation says it this way, and ye shall know the truth in an experiential way, and the truth shall make you free. Church, we need to experience the truth. It's more than a mental ascent or awareness. We experience the truth when we turn the light on or when we see it in the word and we apply it to our lives in the decisions that we make every day. In Jesus' name. Now, I want to give you a revelation on the wisdom of God. Say wisdom. Because this is very powerful. I know we've learned that the word of wisdom is one of the nine gifts of the spirit, right? One of the knowing gifts, right? But I want to tell you that it doesn't, this, this gift of the wisdom, word of wisdom, doesn't have to be active only in a church setting or in any other type of spiritual meeting. 
because the word of wisdom or the wisdom of God, listen, please, can flow in our homes, in your school, in your workplace, or while you're talking on the phone, or even with a stranger, it can operate basically in any place or situation. It's such a powerful, I call it resource, that we need to be familiar with so that we can use it at any time that it's needed. Because it is also how God can speak to us. Remember the promise that he will take care of our daily needs as we put him first. Remember that? That's his promise, right? Personally, God has helped me many times by giving me his wisdom. <laughs> it's like a normal thing for me, you know. Um, and and it, it has helped me a lot. And so I wanted to share this with you. Amen. And I believe God's already working his wisdom on you. You're just not aware of it, okay. So, but I would define wisdom. This is just Sister L's definition. As God's way of providing his solution through practical means. Okay, that's my definition. So it doesn't need the working of miracles, all right? Right, Brother Dylan? It doesn't need the gift of faith. Amen? It's, it's mainly practical solutions to specific situations in our lives so that we can max, maximize our time with God. That's how I see it. And so I have the faith to believe that God will give me his wisdom whenever I need it because I am doing his will and because his will is my priority. Does that make sense? But you know what? That's not the only benefit of God's wisdom. Why? It's available for us. Because the availability of his wisdom also gives me a good reason not to worry. As his wisdom helps me to easily cast my cares unto the Lord every day. Because I know he's going to help me. Even with his wisdom. Even things that seem earthly, right? Duties, responsibilities. He's going to do that for me. Why? So I can constantly walk in his peace. Amen? Jesus' name. And you don't have to be special to get God's wisdom working in you. Hear me. You don't have to be. You just got to be aware. Amen? Because it's flowing. I believe it's always available to us. And I know many of you have shared how you would, people would ask you and you would speak your mind, counsel, and they were surprised. How would you know that? That sounded so wise, you know. It doesn't take a smart person to do it because the source is him, amen. He's the source. He knows the solution every time. Now, encourage your faith because even the most practical things. Because he's concerned about every part of our life. He will do it for you. There is no problem too hard for him. No. But even in the simple things, he wants to help you. Because you're doing his will, amen? He wants to help you. So you can stay focused on him. And so I believe, amen? I believe in the wisdom of the Lord. And the book of Proverbs is a great resource for this. Amen? The whole book of Proverbs talks about it. And I'm just going to share some of the scriptures here. Um, Proverbs 2, 6, 7 says, For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He, lay up, he layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler or shield to them that walk uprightly. Remember, the belt of truth is our protection. Amen. Your wisdom from God is also your protection. Amen. It is a, it's available for us. 
Proverbs 4, 7 says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. So knowledge and understanding are linked to the wisdom of God. Because we need to first know the basic principles in the Word of God. It said principles. Okay? Principles in the Word of God. And then what does understanding do? It gives us the ability to apply our knowledge of the principles in the Word of God so that any time that we need it, we can have God's wisdom or what I call as God's practical solutions. Amen. And as I said earlier, many of, you, many of you are already operating in it. You're just not aware of it. You're just not aware of it. As when people would ask you for counsel, it will just flow. Amen? And it will even amaze them. <laughs> They'll be surprised. They'll say, where did you read that? <laughs> you know? Um, and, but that's how God's wisdom is. And that's when you can give all, God all the glory. Amen? Because he provides that. In Jesus' name. And we just need to hunger for the word of God. And we study it so that we can understand it. And then that wisdom will become a part of you. So seek for the wisdom of God because it will help you to become more efficient with your time. And it will free you from the distractions of the cares of this world that the enemy, enemy just wants to keep throwing at you, right? Okay? To steal your peace, right? Plus, the wisdom will give you solutions to your problems that God wants you to solve in Jesus' name. And I don't have the time to give you specific examples, but maybe at another time. But I think you get what I mean. And there are at least four things that I usually pray for God to loose upon you every day. The spirit of revelation, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, and the spirit of wisdom. Because we need it. It's for us. Amen. I, I pray that every day. Aside from other things, I want to loose that upon the body of Christ. And how do I know this? I, I've read this in the book of Ephesians chapter 1. Remember that chapter? That's very foundational, amen, in, the, in our walk with God, wherein it says there that this is the chapter we learn that we not need to activate, amen, that power and authority through God, amen, and that he's the mind and we are the body and we are the feet and that he places everything of the adversary's power under our feet. That's the same chapter, so study that. You'll learn about what to pray for aside from activating the power and authority of God through you as a body of Christ. So it's available for us, okay? God's wisdom is available for us. In Jesus' name. So wearing the belt of truth, or I would say also loving his word, and when you believe in it, it's more than mental. It's clinging tightly to the word. That's what it really means. When you do that, it will keep us secure and protected and free in our spiritual vision from the dark lies of the enemy. Because the lies of the enemy become powerful to us only when we believe in them. It's just words. But boy, those words become powerful when we claim them as our own. When we actually turn the lie into truth. And we're learning that his word will expose his lies, amen, and set us free and that's why we need to hunger more, amen, for his word and to wear his word securely upon us so that we can always be led by his 
word as a light to our path every day, amen? And this is an ongoing process. And that's why I pray those four things upon the body of Christ every day. We need his word. We need the revelation. We need to know so we know where to go. The Logos is our guide in Jesus' name. And then this process, as it is a process, amen? This process is called being transformed by the renewing of our minds. Amen. And you know these verses, Romans 12, 1 to 2. It says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that you may know that you may see what is that good acceptable and perfect will of God it is one will those are just different characteristic there's like oh I could do this because it's a good will and then maybe next time I'll do the perfect will. no there's only one will every time one will of God amen that we need to always that's why we have to stay on the mark that God has placed in our lives you have that mark it has your name on it and every day when you wake up, Lord, what is that? What is your will today? Stay on that mark, the will of God. And why do we need this transformation? Because we need to have the mind of Christ, which is founded in his word. Amen? Amen. Because he is his word, right? Okay? And that's the way we can prove or confirm the will of God every day. When we know his thoughts, his mind. And how do we know that we're doing this? Or how do we know if we have the mind of Christ working on us? Good question. How do we know? Our actions or our series of decisions or our lifestyle will reveal it all the time. As Proverbs 23, 7 declares, as a man thinks in his heart, what? So is he. And thoughts produce actions. So wrong thinking will bring wrong actions, right? So if wrong thoughts prevent me from doing right actions, then I cannot do the will of God. Isn't that what we're supposed to do, right? Okay, remember our battle in the mind, okay? For example, if you keep skipping church service or forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, especially at this time that we should, that means you have believed in some wrong thought. All right? You get it? Okay. So, number two, I must be transformed into God's mind so that I will think the thoughts that he wants me to think because this will enable me to do the actions that he wants me to do because wrong thinking is wrong actions, actions or God's will, all right? And then number three, thus to be transformed I need my whole mind, my entire thought process, which is also affected by my feelings. We need all this to be renewed or transformed. Amen? Amen? All right. And the beginnings of this process in us is called or is named as when we cast down all imaginations. Remember, we talked about a little about that last week. Casting down all 
imagination. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not, do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination. Say imaginations. And every high thing. Say high thing. That exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought. Not some thoughts. Not many thoughts. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. So if we take a closer look at this scripture, there are basically two types of thoughts that we need to cast down. And I've underlined it. Imaginations. And the high thing is referring to any false thought. False thought of the enemy. That's against the knowledge of God. Okay? Oh, Sister LaChica, I thought those were the same thing. I thought so too. <laughs> we're growing every day, right? We're learning something new every day. But let me give you the, the definition of imaginations, right, In the, for this biblical context. What is imaginations here? Imaginations are the false images of ourselves that the adversary has put within us. False images of ourselves that he has put in us by his influence. We've accepted his lies, right? Wow. Those are imaginations. And we know everything else, that's a lie, okay, that we should remove, that we, we should cast down. And so we need to cast down or remove or make powerless these imaginations or thoughts of ourselves, false thoughts of ourselves, as well as any lie of the devil. This, and this is a choice that we have to make for the Lord to work in us to be set free. We got to choose this, that I want to be, amen, set free. So you have to choose to cast down for this to become powerless, all right, for that thought, that influence in your mind to become powerless. Now I'm going a little, going to flow deeper into that concept of imaginations or the thoughts of ourselves that the enemy puts within us. And this is similar to the adversary's attacks of strong accusations such as in the spirit of condemnation. In Jesus' name. The most destructive type of imagination is when we see ourselves as unlovable to God. This is one of the most destructive. This is also called as shame when we dig in deeper. And the adversary works hard on this tactic to condemn us because when we believe his lie, it will make his work so much easier. So that's why it's one of the main attacks. Because he doesn't have to do much work. If you receive that lie, oh, he'll let you go. Because you will destroy your own self with that lie. Hear me. God wants to set some of you free tonight, completely free. Completely free. That's what he said to me. I believe, and I believe it. And I believe it. He wants to do that. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You see, condemnation is different from guilt or conviction. Okay? Condemnation, conviction, two different things. Okay? Because conviction 
can draw us back to God as we repent, right? But condemnation only draws us farther from God. It is like a spiritual paralysis. It's a powerful weapon of the enemy. So destructive to us. So destructive. Because you can't even help yourself. And to better understand this, let's go to the great or the greatest commandment. Amen? As these concepts are overlapping with stuff we've studied before. And we know this. Master, which, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt what, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, these two commandments that we just read define the three fundamental relationships in life. Our relationship with God, our relationship with others, and our relationship with our self. And here's what we need to know and understand, okay? Because the enemy already knows it. We need to know this. We need to realize this. That the pivotal relationship of these three is the way I feel about myself. Because whether or not I am able to love myself, that will affect my ability to love God and to love others. Now, what is the source? What is our source that enables us to love ourselves? For did you know you can't love yourself on your own? This is the source. This is what works, okay, for loving ourselves, for self-esteem. It is believing in the love of God upon ourself. That is the source. That is what helps us to love Ourself to believe, to cling to, amen, the love of God upon me. You love me, Lord. You love every part of me, Lord. You love me unconditionally, amen. Because as I said earlier, we are not capable of loving ourselves. Because the only scriptural source of the understanding of the worth of self is the revelation of God's love for me. 1 John 4.19 says, we love him because he first loved us. It's all in the word of God. The Bible in basic English translation says, same verse. We have the power of loving because he first had love for us. We need to receive this. We need to believe that he loves us. We need this. We need this in Jesus' name. Here's another one, 1 John 4, 10 to 11. Remember those foundational scriptures on love? Okay, here's one of them. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of our, for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. So you see that connection, the three relationships? Okay. But if we can't love ourselves, we can't do the other two. And it's way more destructive. I just don't have the time to explain it. Because even science and psychology will tell you the damages 
if you can't love yourself. And I'm not going to go talking about that. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. And so if the devil is successful in making us believe that we are unlovable or that God does not love us for whatever reason or whatever neg negative situation that you encountered in your life, then we will not be able to love ourselves. And once again, if we can't love ourselves, then we can't love God or others. Church, believing, receiving God's love is so foundational in our walk with God because rejecting it will paralyze us spiritually and will separate us from God. And I don't have time for this, but that's what happened in the Garden of Eden. They were ashamed because they listened to the voice of condemnation. They hid. God did not separate himself from them. He was looking for them. Where are you? But that's what shame will do. Draw you away from God. You, you're the one doing it. The devil doesn't even have to push you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And that's why shame is so damaging to us. We're not loving ourselves. We're not forgiving ourselves. Or seeing ourselves as unlovable. Because it causes us to hurt ourselves and we don't even know it. And it all started when we believed in the accusation that stinging accusation of the devil that God's love for us was conditional. We know that's a lie, right? Because we know the truth. But can I help you tonight? Can I show you the correct concept of God's love? That will not only set you free from the devil's accusation, but will also liberate you to experience the path of life that is full of joy. Amen? Pleasures forevermore. Amen? That's what he wants for you. That's what he wants for us. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Yes. And... The truth is that nothing in this world can compare to God's love. Amen? Nothing. So here it is. Accepting God's love without reservation is the channel through which I receive everything that God does for me both naturally or spiritually. Got to get that. That's foundational. That truth is foundational. Remember when I talked about the wisdom from God? Remember that? That's just one example of a form of God's love that you can receive because you believe that he loves you enough to give it to you. Amen? And so his love is the conduit. All right. I'm trying to click it. His love is the conduit through which all of his blessings can flow to us. Amen. All right. Amen. Jesus' name. I hope you receive that. I hope you can see that. And here, I'm trying to help you. Amen. Trying to help you here. Here are the thoughts that we need to have about God's love. And feel free to take a picture of this. That I must be worth a tremendous amount to him because he died for me. Because that's in his word, right? 1 John 3, 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. Amen. And we ought to lay down. 
down our lives for the brethren. Romans 8, 31, 32. It's not on the slides, but I'll read it. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with all him also free, freely give us all things? This is for us because of his love. He wants to give these all things, all great things for us, church. We can have this every day, every day. This is ours. This is ours. You see, if I will not allow God to love me unconditionally, then he cannot save me. He cannot heal me. He cannot supply my needs, and he cannot answer my prayers. We need to allow God to love us unconditionally. Unconditionally. Because that is his love, amen? Amen. We need to realize that he loves us because of who we are to him, not because of what we do. Some of you need to get this. Some of you need to get this, okay? That's why we don't do religious tradition, right? Okay, we don't work for him. We let him flow through us, oh God. He is the source of the power, of the grace, amen, the strength to do his will. He loves me because of who I am, how he sees me every time. Because I'm not perfect. Sometimes I make a mistake. But he loves me anyway, man. He loves me anyway. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so the converse of that is God loves us even when we make mistakes or even when we experience failures. Hear me. Because it is his love and his gift of righteousness that covers us every time. Not our own works. Not ourselves. In Jesus' name. And that's why... It's important for us to receive. Remember, I've taught this before. We need to receive the revelation of God's love through his robe or breastplate of righteousness. Amen? Or, or the second part of our defensive armor, right? Because his covering of righteousness is all about his blood that he shed for us. Amen? That gives us the promise of eternal salvation. Every day as we wear his covering of righteousness, I thank him for his blood. Amen. I don't just do this when it's Easter time because every day I'm reminded when I wear his robe, his covering, that I'm safe, that he's going to keep me saved, amen, because he loves me. He loves me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your blood. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Baptize us, Lord, with an awareness of your blood, oh God, because that is your demonstration of love. That is one of your highest demonstrations of love when you gave yourself to us. You see, whenever we wear God's breastplate, of righteousness every time. God can't even see our faults or our repented sins. But when he looks at you, when he looks at me, he can only see himself, his righteousness, amen, his innocence. He sees, his, he sees us as his justified children. Do you believe that? Do you? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. 
you know, I'm almost about to close, and I, I want to give you this last concept, and it's about the kingdom of God. Because we need to have the kingdom of God manifested in us so that we can be complete and whole as we strive to be transformed in our mind, in our spirit, right, so that we can do his will. And we know this, right? Romans 14, 17 says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but is what? Righteousness and peace and joy and the Holy Ghost. To have the manifestation of the kingdom of God in us, it starts with God's righteousness, right? Okay? In us, that covers us. And we just talked about that, okay? So then what comes after God's righteousness? Because there's a sequence in this principle. Thank you. Peace, right? God's peace. What is peace? Amen? But let me say that we can only have God's peace after we receive God's righteousness. That's how it flows. That's how it flows. And what is peace? We define, we can define peace as quietness in the spirit, okay? Quietness in the spirit, rest, wholeness, soundness, well-being. And this is how, I want you to take note of this because this is powerful. This is how God's work of righteousness, his work of righteousness, gives us peace. First, it makes us at peace with our past. That's very important. You can't just ignore your past. You got to deal with your past, whatever was your past, especially the unpleasant stuff, especially the things you got offended from. You've got to deal with your past. You got to have peace with your past, whether it was since you were a child or three years ago or last week. The work of righteousness makes his righteous so powerful. It makes us at peace with our past, his blood, the covering of his blood, amen? It gives us peace or makes us at peace with our past. That's a promise from God, amen? And not only that, it makes us whole. Makes us whole. Remember that other definition of peace, quietness, rest, wholeness, right? Since wholeness is another form of definition, okay, or aspect of peace, when the Lord, he makes us whole when the Lord heals the wounds that are caused by our past. So this wholeness or this peace is a result of God's work of righteousness, of being made at peace with your past and being healed from the wounds of your past and being declared innocent forever. And there is this powerful Verse that supports all that I said, all right? Okay, after you're done taking that picture. Isaiah 32, 17. And the work of righteousness, remember the sequence? The work of righteousness, the giving of his blood that covers us, the work of righteousness shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness Remember, peace, another definite quietness, and assurance forever. I want you to take note of that word assurance. Remember, strong assurance is hope. Remember, we learned about that before, hope, our treasure in God's hope. Okay, we're going to tie this all together. Okay? Then when we experience peace with our past or with the things that we've lost... Okay. then we can experience peace with our present and our future. And pastor has shown this scripture many times, and we know this. Philippians 3, 7, 9. 
But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. That's all we need, amen? That's all we need because in Christ we have everything, right? And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness. Here we come again from the foundation, right? Which is the law, but that which is through the faith, his faith in us, right? The faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. So once I have made peace with what I have already lost from my past, I can then make peace with, it, with what I might lose in my present. These two things result in both his righteousness and his peace being manifested in our life. Then what does his word say that we can have or what, what, can re, what, we, what we can receive after we have his peace? Remember, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. That we can also have his joy, man. And I put beside joy, hope, because that's related to each other. Amen. For joy comes from the revelation of having God's peace always available to us in our life here on earth. And it gives us the hope or assurance for the future. And because of, of the foundation of his peace, I am no longer afraid of what I might lose in the future. And so I'm constantly hopeful for my future and church that gives joy. Thank you, Lord. Don't worry. In your walk with God, you will, you will get it. Amen? Some of you already got it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And here are some scriptures to help us out with that thought. Romans 15, 13. Now the God of hope. What will hope do? Fill you with all joy and peace in believing, right, that ye may abound in hope to the power of the Holy Ghost. And Galatians 5, verse 5, and I'm using the New Century Version for this one, but we have the true hope that comes where did it come from? From being made right with God. Remember the foundation of his righteousness, his blood that he shed for us, right? And by the Spirit, we wait eagerly for this hope. And if you haven't already noticed, the sequence of having God's righteousness, peace, and hope, kingdom of God, right? is the same sequence when we wear our armor of God as what is the last part of our defensive armor that we wear on? Amen. The helmet of salvation, which Apostle Paul refers to as our hope of salvation. That I'm assured of his promise. Amen. That he will keep me safe. He will keep me safe. That I will be with him. I can hold on to that and believe. And the enemy can't throw any accusation because I'm holding on. I'm clinging to that truth. The truth in his word. That he loves me because of his blood. The work of his righteousness. And I'm at peace with that. And because of that peace, <laughs> I have the joy the hope of my future, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Isn't the word of God so amazing, amen? For the truth will confirm itself. For if you have the correct revelation, it will keep coming to you, right? Or you will keep seeing it as you study the word of God. And that's what we're doing all the time. It keeps coming back. It keeps coming back because it's one. It's one word, amen? If you have the revelation... 
And I hope that this lesson serves as another layer of the revelation of God's truth upon you because we need to become secure, amen, secure in the word and have the mind of Christ in us. And I'm closing. The Holy Spirit is significant in producing joy, hope, and peace because righteousness, peace, and joy are not human emotions. They are spiritual blessings from God and produced by him alone. Man cannot make himself feel any of these things through his own efforts or his, his intellect. Neither can religion produce them. They are a work of the Spirit of God in our lives. For God, God alone is the source of all these things. Amen. I wonder if you could come to the front. I believe that God, God wants. God wants to release joy in this place. What you heard tonight is foundational to understand how we are saved. We're saved by the love of God. You're saved through Acts 2.38 if you die right away after you've been born again. But all of us have not died after the new birth because we're still here. And so the inception is Acts 2.38, but what keeps us saved is the active work of the love of God flowing through us. Does that make sense? Most Pentecostals don't even really understand that. But what you heard tonight, I would pray that you would meditate on it, listen to it again, watch it again, so you would understand how God saves us, and not only us, but those that we're bringing along to this truth. Romans 5, 5 says, And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed or planted or given abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. Have you ever wondered why the Scripture says you cannot be saved by your works? Because if you can, then... There's no need for Jesus Christ to die on the cross and take our place. In fact, it goes a step further that our righteousness is as filthy rags. So if you're working to earn God's approval, love, to be saved, you're not saved. You can't be saved that way. Because this is given. And the only way to receive something that's, the only way to obtain something that's given is to receive it. That's why you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We receive forgiveness. We receive the love of God. And so Jesus said, freely you have received, you freely give. That's where loving others come into play. But I believe tonight God wants to release joy. So we'll get a little, a taste of the joy of the Lord. Sister Chica made some deep revela revelatory statements. I know it comes from God uh, that righteousness and peace and even joy is not, you don't, you don't manufacture this out of your own spirit or your goodness. This is, this is God's righteousness. This is God's peace. He said, I, I leave you peace not as the world gives. He says, I leave you my peace that passes understanding. And so tonight, I believe God wants to release joy in this place. Yes. That you and I may experience it. For the joy of the Lord indeed is our strength. 
<laughs> and when you get a little taste of this divine joy from heaven, <laughs> it's going to give you hope. It's going to compel you to want more and more of this joy. And there is revelation that you can have this joy every single day. Every time you come into the presence of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord, there is completeness. There is fullness of joy. I want you to rejoice right now. No wonder the apostle Paul said while in jail, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. However you know how right now, however you know how to rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. Come on, somebody. Your righteousness, your religion, your ways is not enough. It's got to be God doing the work for you. It's got to be a flow of the love of God, even loving him back by his own love. It's all through him by his stripes. We are healed. He Release the joy of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, begin to lift up your hands all over this place. God's going to begin to unleash what he calls joy unspeakable by the authority of the word of God and the power that is in the name of Jesus. I command you now, receive ye the Lord, this joy in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Would you rejoice right now? Would you rejoice in the name of Jesus? He kalabordianda la bahaya. He alaboroko. Come on, somebody begin to rejoice right now. He karabata la bordia la bahaya. He alabosata la bahaya. He karamanda la bohoye. He alaboro sonda la baroko to la baha. He karabohonda robo. He karabo. I wonder if you could step out of the aisle and just begin to let loose in the Holy Ghost. Come on. This is what we're going to experience in heaven. You're getting a taste of what you're going to see when you cross through those gates. Where there's no more sorrow, but there's only joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No more chains, no more bond. I am free. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. If you've never danced before, if you've never jumped around the aisles, if you've never gotten loose in the Holy Ghost, now's your chance. Now's your time. Ready? I am free. No more shackles. Chains, no more bondage. I am free. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Somebody already received the joy of the Holy Ghost. Why did you just begin to worship Him in this place?
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. He karabahatalabahaya. If you're struggling with any type of physical illness or physical impairment, whatever it may be, if you need physical healing in your body, I want you to just begin to take a step forward. If you need physical healing in your body, in the name of Jesus, if you need physical healing in your body, just begin to step forward in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now I want you to think in your mind, whatever physical thing that you're struggling with, I want you to think about it in your mind. And I want you to imagine in your mind God completely taking that and removing it from your body, removing it from every single cell, removing it from every single ligament, every single bone, every single muscle, every single part of your body. Imagine it being removed. And when what you are believing for right now in your mind, that is exactly what is going to take place. Every single one lined up right here is going to receive their physical healing. And I want you to believe right now in the name of Jesus. The word of faith is going to be released. Are you ready in Jesus name? By the authority of the word of God and the power that is in the name of Jesus. I command every bone. I command every muscle. I command every cell. I command every ligament. I command every cartilage in these bodies to be ye healed in the name of Jesus Christ. The son of the Lord In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Those of you that were struggling physically and had a physical bondage in your body, raise your hand if it's no longer there anymore. Begin to lift up your hand if it's no longer there before. There's one, there's two. Lift up your hand if it's no longer there anymore. Hallelujah. How does your neck feel? Thank you, Jesus. Sister Lachica's neck got healed, and the healing is already starting and forming. Hallelujah. Sister Edie, the Lord healed you of your foot. How does your foot feel now? Your knee? Praise God. Hallelujah. That's all it takes. It's just a little bit of faith. It's a little bit of a mustard seed. Continue worshiping the Lord. Let's thank him for what he's done. If you've been through what I've been through, then you would be praising too. Then you've been through what I've been through. Then you would be praising too If you've been through what I've been through Then you would be praising too If you've been through what I've been through You would be praising too If you've been through what I've been through Then you would be praising too If you've been through what I've been through 
Would you rejoice one more time in the Lord this evening in the name of Jesus Christ? Let's thank him for what he has done. And let's desire more and more of his joy. How many believe that you can experience that joy every single day? Every single day when the presence of the Lord shows up, you can experience that joy in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for what you have done. I thank you for your people that are here, God. I thank you, Lord, for what you have accomplished, oh Lord, through your love. I pray that your love will keep flowing through us, God, every single time, especially as we gather together in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you in Jesus' name. Keep flowing in the love of the Lord. Keep flowing in the joy of the Lord in Jesus' name.